Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be doing some hardware upgrades, but this time it's not in the $5 Windows 98 PC as much as I wish that it was. This is actually in my main computer. You can see we've got some uh, more modern hardware here. We do have a solid state drive, a standard 2.5 inch solid state drive, which would go great in the 98 PC. But that video is coming, guys. And actually, I have to do this video first because the SSD I want to use in the 98 PC is currently in my main computer. But I've got three hard drives here, you can see. We've got one M2 drive, we've got a standard SATA solid state drive, and we have a regular mechanical hard drive here. So, why do I have three hard drives? Well, it's quite simple. I'm running out of space on my computer. So my computer is a machine that I built back in 2017. I've not mentioned it a whole lot on this channel in recent times, but yeah, it's four years old at this point. If I, gosh, I can't even believe that. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but yeah, I built it in early 2017 and I built it with an Intel Core i7-7700K, which was the latest gen Intel CPU at that time. I also put a GTX 1070 in it for the graphics card. It originally had 16 gigs of RAM. I've upgraded that to 48 gigabytes. That is how much it has now. And I've upgraded the hard drives uh, over the years as well. It currently has five hard drives, three mechanical drives, and two solid state drives. The larger solid state drive is a 256 gig Samsung, I think it's an 850 Evo, and that is what I use for my operating system and my programs, my boot drive essentially. The other solid state drive is used for Adobe Premiere temporary storage. That's what it's exclusively used for. It is a 128 gig uh, solid state drive that was originally in a 2011 MacBook Pro that I covered in this video right here if you want to go check it out. Now the three hard drives are used in order of descending capacity. I have a three terabyte one that is used for games, a two terabyte one that is used for data, and a 500 gigabyte one that is used for virtual machines, which is actually uh, the oldest hard drive that I have. It's it's from 2008. Is uh, That's when I first got that drive. It still runs today, believe it or not. It's a Seagate Barracuda. Actually, all the drives in that computer are Seagate Barracuda drives. I've had a great experience with them, and I have no complaints. In fact, this drive right here is a four terabyte Seagate Barracuda, and it's going to be replacing the two terabyte data drive in my computer. These two solid state drives are replacing the two solid state drives that are currently in it. This one's going to be used for the boot drive, so I'm going to be replacing the 256 gig. And then I got this drive right here, the Samsung 950 Evo Plus NVMe M2 500 gigabyte SSD. What that means is this is just essentially a really fast SSD. Let's just put it that way. It's going to be much faster than what you're going to get with this SATA drive right here. And that's going to be awesome for my workflow because I'm planning on using this drive right here solely to store my Premiere project files on and all of the assets that go with those project files, obviously. So installing the drives was pretty straightforward. For the M2 drive, I had to take out my GPU. Obviously, the slot was kind of underneath there. And and that was, I would say, the most involving one. I just had to take that out and pop the drive in, screw the screw in, and that was really all there was to that. For the SATA SSD, I installed it in this front bracket that my case has, which is pretty nice. So I took out my old boot drive, put in the new one, and uh, yeah, I had to screw it in, obviously. And when I put it back, I realized I should have plugged the cables in before I put it back in. So you can see me start to put the cables in, then I just take it out again and, uh, and plug them in. So yeah, I think that looks really, really nice in the front there. And for all the other drives, I had to move to the back of the computer. So I just took out one drive. I took out my three terabyte games drive and I put in the four terabyte drive in its place because I need to have the two terabyte data drive and this drive in the computer at the same time so I can clone that drive to this drive and then once i'm done with the cloning process i can take that drive the old two terabyte drive out and put the three terabyte one back in and then i'm just going to format that two terabyte drive and i'll use it uh, for for more storage and then i also had to take out the second ssd that's in the computer this pny one right here that's again that i'm currently using for premier temporary storage and I'm going to put the boot drive that I'm currently using in its place so I can still boot into Windows and clone this drive over to the one terabyte SSD that I put into the front. I'm not going to bother mounting it because this is an SSD and I'm just going to take it out once I'm done cloning it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Actually, I'll put it up 
in the little tray here just kind of rest it on there but yeah there we go all right welcome back so we've got disk management opened up here and you can see it's found three new disks that it wants to initialize so we're going to use the gpt partition style we've got disk four and disk five so this is the four terabyte one this is the 500 gigabyte one which is the m2 drive and then disk zero here is the one terabyte ssd so we're going to start out with cloning this is the data drive here that's yeah, see i've actually got some unallocated space over here but this is the drive that we want to clone to disk number four here and let me show you what i'm talking about with storage so if we open up this pc this is the drive here my data drive that is this one now i i could expand this but even with i mean even with 22 more gigs of space i just would rather have a much larger drive and that's why i went with that four terabyte one and you can see the ssd here we've only got 39.6 uh, gigabytes free so yeah i definitely want to clone that one as well so i've got macrium reflect here which is the same program and here's glasswire there's a new version okay cool now this is the same program i used in my disk cloning tutorial video that I did when I first got this computer. And it works, uh, you know, exactly the same. It's got the same functionality. Obviously, this is a newer version. So what we're going to do is find disk number, what is this? I just want to make sure I get the right one. Disk number, disk one here. So this is the data one. So we're going to clone disk one to disk four. So we'll find disk number one is right. Oh, oh, because there's no disk zero. That's why there's no disk zero in here. Disk zero is the SSD. So we have to just up everything by one. So disk one is actually disk two right here. So this is the D drive. So we're going to select that and clone this disk. And we're going to select the disk to clone it to. And that is going to be disk number five. So we scroll down here. Here's disk number five. And yes, it's got its uh, 16 megabyte partition that it makes when you uh, initialize it, but that's okay. And I'm going to unselect this one here, so we'll just copy this partition here. We'll click on Next, and we're not going to bother scheduling it. It'll just run right now, so we'll hit Finish, and run this backup now. We're not going to save the uh, XML file, so we'll hit OK. And it is now cloning. Now, the nice thing about Macrium Reflect, and well, I'm sure other cloning programs that you run within Windows have the same functionality, but you can still use your computer while this is running. It doesn't need to, you know, shut down your computer. And even for the drive that you're currently booted into, like with the OS drive that I'm booted off of right now, I can absolutely clone that over to the new SSD while being booted into Windows. Well, three hours, 15 minutes and 55 seconds later, here we are the clone has finished so yeah it definitely took a while but again this was two terabytes of data it had to clone so uh, here's the clone window we'll just close out of that and now you can see it's actually mounted the drive as the g drive so if i pull up this pc here see we've got the, the d drive and the g drive and the g drive is still showing as 1.79 terabytes that is because the partition is obviously the same size so we have to expand that so if we go down here, uh, here's the cloned drive. So we're going to right click on this partition, extend volume, and we're gonna extend it to the, uh, to the maximum amount on the drive. It's already put in here for us. So we're gonna hit next and finish. And just like that, we now have a, if we press F5 here, boom, there we go. 1.88 terabytes free. So that, is beautiful so now what we can do is this drive is going to have to be formatted i'm going to probably use it uh, i didn't mention this but that games drive that three terabyte drive is actually split as two separate partitions two terabytes is for games and i have one terabyte for my archive of software because i keep uh, not only virtual machines on this computer but also an archive of all my iso images and tools and things like that so i might uh, recombine those uh, together and put them on this two terabyte drive so next Next up, we're going to clone the SSD that I'm booted off of right now. Now you'll notice that uh, just to, we're going to click on clone this disk here just to show you. So we're going to select uh, disk number one here. Now to avoid not being able to extend this partition without converting the volume to a dynamic volume from within disk management, I'm going to not copy this partition right here. This is one of the recovery partitions that I'm going to copy over, but I'm going to copy these four partitions over and then extend this one leave uh, whatever 513 megabytes unallocated and then come back and copy this partition over. So we're gonna hit uh, next and next and uh, just to make sure we've got everything here. Okay, finish. 
And we're going to run this backup now, or run this clone now, but it, it says it's a backup. And this, uh, in theory, should not take nearly as long as the other one did. So, I'll come back when we're finished. Alright, so all we got to do is extend this volume right here. So, we're going to do just that. But we have to make sure that we leave. Partition is 513 megabytes. We'll leave 520 megabytes. I'll hit next. Finish. And so, we've left... Oh, 522 megabytes. Okay. You know what? We can extend it a little bit more. Let's, let's get those two extra megabytes in there. Yeah, there we go. So 520 megabytes, that will be plenty of space for the last partition on the drive. So we're going to uh, just close out of that. And if we go into this PC now and refresh, you should see, yep. And we go back to Macrium, reflect here, refresh. And oh, it's actually 519.6 megabytes. Okay, well that's still fine. So we'll clone this disc right here. That should work, hit next next and finish six seconds that's the fastest clone i've ever seen okay so the main thing we got to do is see if the computer can boot if we remove the drive that we were just booted off of so this is the ssd here that's going to come on out so there it is and we're also going to remove i believe it was what was it this one here was the two terabyte one yes because i got the uh i got the other one already out the th three terabytes so we'll undo this here and then this should just slide on out. So before I put anything else back in, can we power this on? And will it be able to boot and uh, just find the Windows partition and the boot manager and everything on that drive? That is the question. It looks like it can. It's booting up, folks. That is awesome. Oh, and there's Backblaze letting me know that uh, the hard drive G is only backed up when it's called D, because I have to change that. Oh yeah, because the drive letters are going to be messed up still. Yeah, so we have to change this to drive letter D, which we can do. Obviously the C drive is, you know, it's going to change that to C automatically for us, but we got to open up disk management here. Data G, and we're going to change drive letter and paths and change it to D. Wow, everything, can you believe it? Everything worked. Actually, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything because we still have to plug all the other drives back in, which I don't really see how anything could go wrong. But isn't that what we always say and then something just manages to go wrong? This is an MJD video after all. Oh, but one thing I forgot to do, have you noticed something I forgot to do? Yeah, I forgot to uh, partition the M2 drive. Here it is right here. Yeah, I haven't even, uh, <laughs> I've not even partitioned this yet. So we're gonna make a new simple volume on it. We just use the entire space. And gosh, I'm just gonna call this, this is gonna be Premiere Temp. I usually use the P drive for that. All I have to do now is just format the old drives and uh, repurpose them as I need. And like I said, one of these SSDs is going in the $5.98 PC, but I still got to get some more parts for that. Well, just the one part, the IDE to SATA adapter so I can plug this thing into it. But yeah, we'll get an SSD in that thing. And uh, I really think, I mean, I think the SSD is the only thing that I haven't upgraded aside from the motherboard, but I want to leave the motherboard as it is. I've gotten some feedback about this. Some, some of you guys asking if I'm going to update the motherboard. And some of you have asked me to keep the motherboard the way it is. And I think that's absolutely the right way to go because it wouldn't really be, I mean, if we upgrade the motherboard, then none of the parts in that computer are gonna be original because we've already upgraded the RAM, we've upgraded the graphics card, we've upgraded the CPU, and we're gonna upgrade the SSD soon enough. And I think we should leave the motherboard as it is and just leave the case as it is. And uh, at least for now, but I don't really see myself uh, upgrading the motherboard just to, just to keep it original so we can still call it the $5.98 PC, even though it's going to be the, the, the one part that's still in there. Um, but yeah, guys, that's really all I've got for you today. I know this is a little bit of a different video. It's definitely not uh, really anything vintage tech related, but I like to do these videos every once in a while, and hopefully you enjoyed this one for what it is. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.